On today's show, we celebrate 91.1 The Globe, WGCS Goshen, and its 60th year in broadcast here at the college. A Goshen College professor has found a unique friendship in the most unexpected places. And finally, a program based off the college's study service term makes its way to high school. All that and more on The Globe News Report. Welcome to The Globe News Report. I'm Allison Priggy. And I'm Katie Spore. Over this past semester, The Globe has undergone some major changes. These changes will include the Globe News Report every month on this brand new set. And thank you to all the hard work of those who were involved to make the new edition of 91.1 The Globe. October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I had the opportunity to sit down with two survivors that are still heavily involved with the community. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and you may have noticed that stores have stocked up on their pink gear. But it's not just the department stores that are going pink. Lucas Parker, son of breast cancer survivor Melissa Parker, pushes for his classmates to go pink as well. Wear pink tomorrow for my mom. She I officially was diagnosed with breast cancer at the end of July in 2016. I found a lump in my breast on June 21st, 2016. You never forget that date. My husband was a huge support. He did anything and everything I needed, um, but then my boys were my focus. So it was important for me to show them that you can be diagnosed with breast cancer, but you can survive. So I still went to all of their games. And I sat there in pain and with drains hanging out of me, but that was my focus, that I had to be better for them. Another breast cancer survivor, Trish Lambert, kept her family in mind on the road to remission. And I immediately thought I was going to die, and then I thought about my kids. And I had to rely totally on them, and um, they were my support and my encouragement. And after my surgery, I was totally unable to do anything because it was such a traumatic surgery, and then I had a negative reaction to anesthesia and pain meds, and you know, I was totally dependent on them, and they were my motivation to get better. Dr. Fiona Denham, breast surgical oncologist at the Goshen Retreat Women's Health Center, provided information on who is most likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer. Statistically speaking, when you look at what is the most common age group for women to be diagnosed with breast cancer, the median age is actually in early 60s, like 60, 62. Um, so that's really kind of the prime population and the most common um, demographic where we see breast cancer diagnoses. It is a very common cancer among women, that one in eight women will be affected by breast cancer at some point during their lifetime. And so everyone has a family member or a friend or someone that they know in the community who's been affected by this. That's why October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And it means a little something extra than other months, especially to survivors like Lambert and Parker. Breast Cancer Awareness Month means to me a celebration for people like me who have survived, but also standing in solidarity with other women who are somewhere along the road to um, conquering breast cancer, whatever their stage is. Don't be like me. Don't put it off. Don't say, oh, I don't have a history, so I don't have to worry about this. Um, get yourself screened. I have no family history, so I should, this shouldn't have happened to me, and it did. For Globe News, I'm Katie Spore. The past midterm election, Globe News took a look at early voting in Elkhart County. Here's Bryce Stover with the story. With Election Day on Tuesday, we talked about the importance of voting with Elkhart County Voter Outreach Coordinator Kelsey McClure. It's, it's certainly very important anytime you have the opportunity to vote. I would say you should go out and do it. It's important not just on the national level, but also for state and local officials. We vote on who our county sheriff is, county treasurer, auditor, people who may affect you directly, especially with you know when you pay your taxes, property all of that, you get to have a choice in who's representing your school board, your township board, and they will pass legislation or make decisions based on that as well. So it's not always just party issues. A lot of the positions, school boards in particular, are nonpartisan. In our county, we offer a couple types of early voting. You can request an absentee ballot by mail where we will send you your ballot or you can come into any of our open locations that offer early voting hours. And it generally just works similar as it does on election day. We also spoke with early voter Jesus Santoyo about voting early. Uh, my reasoning for voting early was because on election day, I had to work. Uh, the benefits of voting early are that the lines are, aren't going to be as long 
as on voting day. Um, it's easier to accommodate your schedule to it. So it's important for people to know, to do their research, and to understand that there are more than just national level seats when it comes to elections, that it affects all of us at all levels. This has been Bryce Stouffer with Globe News. When we return, the SSTT program starts in high school. The study service theology term, available for high school students, is a two-week internship to Central America. Bryce Stouffer talked to a professor, Keith Miller, about SSTT. The study service theology term, or SSTT, began in the summer of 2017. A Goshen College program available to high school students, we spoke with program director Keith Graber Miller to find out about SSTT. SSTT started in 2017. We ran our first group uh, in the summer of 2017. We ran a second group this past summer, the summer of 2018. And at this point, we're hoping that we can run it for a number of additional years. Uh, Lily had invited us and a number of other schools across the country to submit proposals for grants for the, the High School Youth Theology Institutes, H-S-Y-T-I, Theological Institutes. And we submitted a proposal then uh, that was for doing something like SSTT. When we look for people, we look for people who have an appreciation for the church, maybe even a love for the church, at least in what the church could be at its best. Uh, for people who are somewhat interested in thinking theologically about the world, they ask questions about God, where God is working or isn't working in the world, and what that means for them, how they might participate in what God's doing in the world. One of the reasons that we chose Guatemala for this program is that they have an existing uh, arrangement through SAMIA, which is an Anabaptist seminary that's in Guatemala City. One of the things we're really working on is having a very diverse group, and that means diversity geographically, where they are from in the country, uh, 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 ethnically, racially, uh, theologically, and that diversity has been, I think, a real strength of the program. We're hoping that we can do the SSTT program for another maybe four or five years. Applications are due by the end of October. To apply and find out more about SSTT, you can find that at www.goshen.edu slash SSTT slash about. This has been Bryce Stouffer from Globe Media. As the study service term continues to grow here at Goshen College and beyond, this year marks a historic year in our own history. 60 years of broadcasting for your home for culturally progressive music was celebrated at homecoming for the college. Zach Begley reports on the events. The Globe celebrated its 60th anniversary in October. It started with a birthday party on Tuesday, October 2nd in the West Lawn Dining Hall with cake and party favors for students, faculty, and staff. Then on that Friday, October 5th, it was College Radio Day, where the station broadcasted live for 24 hours in celebration of college radio around the world, including an all-vinyl music show from 1 to 5 at Ignition Music Garage. To conclude the week, there was a celebration of 60 years at the Globe in the Newcomer Center on the campus of Goshen College that Saturday, October 6th, where Jason Samuel, as well as former students, spoke about the Globe. Thanks, everybody, for uh, coming today to honor the 60th anniversary of WGCS. And it's, uh, it's a privilege and an honor to have you here uh, celebrating with us. It was really a joy uh, and a privilege to, to, to work with both of them and actually, I was going to say this at the end, I'll say it now, uh, both of them I, and, and, and many others here at Goshen College faculty and staff, I consider mentors and, and really lifelong friends and so I'm really grateful for that. I think the Globe it definitely shaped me as a person but also um, showed me that I can teach people to do things in general, but mostly radio. You work hard, I'll work hard for you. And those words have always kind of stuck with me, like, okay, if I work hard, then he's gonna do whatever he can to help me out and put me in a, in a situation to succeed. And I spent almost every day for four years in that little studio at the top of the spiral staircase. And it's just, it's one of a kind. Um, I think it's one of a kind because between the globe and between Jason's leadership, 
I mean, you can't find that anywhere else. With Globe News, I'm Zach Begley. When we return for Globe News, a professor has a unique friendship on Goshen's campus. Friendships come in all shapes and sizes here at Goshen College. Joanne Brandt sat down with Riley Friesner to discuss her unique friendship on campus. You might know Joanne Brandt because she's worked at Goshen College as a professor and academic dean since 1993. Or you might know Joanne for her unexpected friendship with a squirrel she calls Patch. I met Patch about two and a half years ago. I was heading out that gate uh, to the campus and this little squirrel ran up and sat at my feet looking up as though I was supposed to give her something. And I, I think I might have actually had something to give her, which was fortuitous. And then uh, I just started noticing around because she has a very distinctive white patch on her right elbow. And so she's easy to spot. My cat died about four years ago and I really wanted to get another pet. But at this time in our lives, we're not home enough and that's not fair to an animal. So it's just nice to have an animal in your life. Joanne also wants the students of Goshen College to know that they should not attempt to pet the squirrels on campus or feed them any human food. For Globe TV, my name is Riley Friesner. What an impressive semester, Katie. For sure. With all the changes going on, there was a lot to do. There sure was, and there's more to come. As we end up this semester for Goshen College, we look forward to what is to come. So as we say farewell for this show, it's time to look back on the past semester of hard work to make Globe News a reality. Thank you.